All right, welcome everyone to Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for that, that time, time I got, got reincarnated, reincarnated as a slime. slime. Season, Season 2, episode 13. 13. All right, so we have a unique situation here. Mm -hmm. We got ourselves uh, Rimuru's new current state of things, but we also had a bit of a recap episode before this. We did. Which we watched on our own time just because it seemed like it was the kind of thing that gave us very little new information exactly and then primarily sets a new status quo for Veldora and Ifrit which is cool they have water cooler conversations yeah, yeah yeah and now Veldora is going to be brought back into the story after he's been imprisoned for all this time because of what Rimuru is now able to do yep so cool awesome I, I think Veldora being in a body double of sorts of of Rimuru's that's then one he's able to take on a new form of and just go about and do things and stuff. It's like, hey, a character we haven't seen in a very long time. That's yeah. that's cool. And introduced at the very around. beginning. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. I personally, though, I think at this point it would be kind of nice to get some Milim focus because while we did get that whole thing of her fighting Karrion and whatnot, I feel like her interacting with Rimuru and the main, main cast of characters would be pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. And having then just everybody being back, everything being reestablished, the status quo has been, you know, just brought back to a state of equilibrium, except M Rimuru has ascended to becoming a demon lord, but also an angel with the skill of Raphael and also kind yeah, of a that whole demon thing. with Beelzebub. Let's see how this all plays against the world of other demon lords that may or may not be in some kind of strange alliance. Yep. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, then come back here for the discussion. All right, okay. that's 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 the uh, the the resolution of the kind of the the arc of that whole problems, and now we have. People from the past one. and connections to previous characters just yep. rushing at me like, hey, 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 Rimuru, we're hey. your allies. Mm -hmm. We're connected to you tangentially somewhat. So we're we need to be involved fight. in all this whole, yes. this whole shindig because the world's about to change right. in a very dramatic way. You're a demon lord. You're going to be picking a fight with another demon, at least one other demon and lord. And he's going to announce his kind of a demon being lordship. a demon lord. Yeah. And, and in some ways, that's not an immediate problem for the kingdoms in general. It's more the... Oh, no, no, no. We're used to people being of that level. Right. So now they immediately send their full parties to parlay and talk. Yeah, you because know, diplomacy their, and stuff. Uh, their association with Rimuru just basically got more valuable. A lot more valuable. So, and so a sense. random guy whose daughter is just one who kind of knew Rimuru a little bit is like, I'm here. I'm here too. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you, you, obviously, my my daughter is taken with you, or or you've seduced my daughter. <laughs> right. The, the silliness of it, I like it because it because this is all a bunch of like exposition dump characters we don't really necessarily know or care about yet, just coming in, mm -hmm. having them be shticks and um, kind of one note characters with a with a gimmick from the beginning sets us up to be. Okay, that's their role in the story that they're playing. We don't need to freak out too much about them right now. No. They'll be un unveiled more later. Right, to the degree that they'll end up being relevant in the story moving forward. Right, right. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then as far as what the what the stakes are, we have it. We know what the direction is. Mm -hmm. And so now it's just a question of how... How mechanically do we go about this? How mechanically do we go about doing that? Because I don't think they immediately go to war. I think it's the thing that they need to basically bring all the surrounding areas basically into alignment with what the goal will right. eventually end up being, which is not uh, going to be uh, Rimuru wanting to have a demon lord, demon lord battle over all these people here, because then tons of them could die. But, you know, but there is the whole thing of like, hey, if he needs allies for this, right? Because mm -hmm. Clayman has allies. Clayman has tons of allies, yeah. Then, yeah, it would make sense to let everyone know the situation because they've dealt with rulers of countries being demon lords before. Mm -hmm. But if he says, hey, there's this demon lord that did all this really shady shit, mm -hmm. Then that might get their attention. They're right? motivated. Mm -hmm. They then uh, they have to choose a side, kind of. Right. They devote also their resources and ability and time and 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 people to Rimuru's goal, 
rather than the worry that we had in a previous like bit, which was, oh, if Rimuru becomes a demon lord, the world might turn against him. And this is oh, the instance uh -huh. of where, no, that's not necessarily the case. The world is used to demon lords. They're not some crazy right. surprise thing. It's and more the, hey, we have a storm dragon who's the guardian of a forest, you know, and in this area and stuff. Now he's with Rimuru. Everybody is extra then excited right. to be aligned with Rimuru because it's like, wait, even demons, the d d dragon gods, the, everybody's and, on him, on his side. This is amazing. Let's keep this going. And given how this is sort of moving on very quickly and in a positive direction, mm -hmm. I'm guessing we can assume that, um, and given how they fully routed the kingdom of Falmouth's army, but then also the king of Falmouth himself, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry as much about the idea of, oh, Something ha something terrible happened. We tried to defend our own, and then suddenly Rimuru smote yep. our army. Yep. You know, and it all happened so fast. There was no way they could right exactly or plan for this. Yeah. Yep. So so I get the feeling they're not going to be able to respond in the way that they would have been worried about of contacting uh, the other countries. So yep. okay. Yep. This is this is going very well. Yes. And in some ways, I like that because a lot of the stuff that I was more worried about could have led to melodrama conflict. And hmm. this is the kind like, where it's just the nope. We have our super powerful protagonist acquiring ultimate skills casually. Just yep. the whole nature of what happened with Veldora being what it was. And now the fact that he's gone and become so like in tune with Rimuru. He's read up on all of his history, knows all, all of the manga, manga and the anime and every stuff like that, making tons of references and things. Yep. Then leads to him having his own essence as an ultimate skill. That's crazy. And then just, okay. Now let's let's move forward. This is right. this is this is the next step here. Let's go to the demon lord conflict or demon lord drama. Right. And rescue a demon lord. Yeah. So let's rescue one of them because clearly cool. he got his ass beat and by I, Millim. I like that and as a also by the other the right the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I like that as a um as a specific objective that's not like the unite the world against the claimant kind of a thing right more vague and esoteric with the political side of things exactly this is more it's, concrete it's very concrete and to the point and it also is a way to deliver on the sort of mystery slash promise that we had introduced a while ago of what is the situation with milam exactly mm -hmm. because we don't fully know why all of this stuff is happening even if we know how it's happening mm -hmm. so having a reason for them to go to her and then also introduce this new character carrion maybe because you know, Carrion was kind of introduced with his fight and beat down last episode. Right. So, you know, if we get that, awesome. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, but all in all, a rather, rather, rather straightforward episode. Mm -hmm. It makes sense why they wanted to do a recap bit and just kind of bridge all this changing stuff with a little bit of exposition. But the main things about this episode is that it's just, it's just a springboard into the next arc. We even get a new OPED. Yep. It's the second half of the season. Um, we had the aspect of since they were all named by Rimuru, whenever Rimuru evolves or gains in power, they, they, as well. they also as well. And, and then Shion use that for a gimmick joke of Shion actually giving the ability to change the material reality of what she's cooking to taste how she likes. Hey, watch, there's going to be some point where they actually need to poison someone and they're just going to make it so that it's, you know, uh, like Iocane powder, odorless, tasteless, traceless, and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. No, uh, it's it's silly. It's 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 fun. It moves things. Uh, it moves things from from plot point to joke to plot point to joke to yes. meeting time to I moth think, falling down dead and all that. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. I feel like this season of slime had a much better handle on things production wise. That oh, yes. If they're adapting things in a certain way where they had to leave a whole bunch of stuff cut and put into like a recap episode of so sorts or, or or what have you, I feel like the pacing is going through things rather nicely, even to the point where it's the, and then I told them all about my plans as to what to do. And it's basically a bare minimum, like, you're gonna go mm -hmm. here, you're gonna go here, you're gonna go here, and yep. that's about it. And, and then, even using comedy to like touch back on things that are being seeded of stuff like Great Sage or Raphael now, mm -hmm. you know, being an individual with personality and id mm -hmm. and will and all of that stuff. The fact that Rimuru can do something that kind of pisses them off and makes them act differently. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Like, and and then he has to actually like uh, <laughs> apologize and you know and reason with them and all that stuff, as opposed to them just being this little you know uh, assistant bot, right? right? That just helps him with everything yeah. that he needs. You know, that on top well, of all the stuff of the power evolutions and things like that. Yeah, exactly. We're already getting into some potentially like 
uh, we're setting the groundwork for potentially sketchy genie order interpretation kind of mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, yeah. cool. That, that was that was fun. I also loved that uh, Rimuru's thing about if they have any hostility, if they're hostile, then bring it up. But it's the idea that this guy actually was hostile. Yep. By the nature that he believed that they mm-hmm. were. Um, uh, that, that that he, he was had going kidnapped to... his daughter, right? And, and he knew who it was. He but, knew he was coming here to right. Yeah. But here's the tricky thing: because the guy didn't know that this was Rimuru exactly. Uh, Raphael was actually right in that mm-hmm. they didn't have hostility towards a Rimuru from his perspective, because it was hostility towards a Rimuru, which means that Raphael doesn't necessarily have the full ability to know the minds of these people and stuff. Or or maybe just, you know, Raphael isn't being tasked with making educated guesses right uh-huh, now. Uh-huh, So true. there's just no immediate hostility. But also, uh, one thing to just sort of throw out there, I don't, in, I didn't entirely buy the, the dad coming in and then suddenly going to cast the, the ability and all that stuff. Because, like, he's also here to be a part of the negotiations and everything. Right? Like, that was, that, like, you yeah, know, his Rimuru, characterization was Rimuru pretty dumb. Yes. brought it up afterwards. So, you oh, yeah. know, He's a joke character. He is a joke He's character. He's absolutely a joke character. His yes. characterization makes no sense. But yes, yeah. it is it is it is funny as fuck to mm-hmm. have a character come in, see someone who they know of reputation wise, immediately start spamming right, Naruto with, jutsus and with fantastic visuals for some crazy visuals. apocalyptic spell they're right, about to right. unleash. For yeah. his own kind of um Razin equivalent of nuke bomb sh- yep. shit. But but the anime giving enough attention to it, like you're saying, where it's actually like, oh god, he's actually casting Wait, a pretty he... powerful spell. Right. But he's a basic human or a elf or homunculus whatever. vessel for an elf to to use, right. which means he has to full cast the spell. He's hard casting. He's literally right. doing the 10 second incantation. Meanwhile, there's all of these people here. Who, who... could just be like, um, you're dead. Right, <laughs> or just at the very least interrupt the casting, right? But they're just sort of sitting there watching it happen. Because it's kind of dumb. It's like, funny. What? But I love that because from a high fantasy setting, mm-hmm. typically comedy is the farthest thing thrown like, yes, away. Yes, because right, it doesn't match with the being serious, you know. Well, well right, but that's that's lame. D and D, as far as far as from my perspective, is at its best when you lean into the silly aspects of having a world like this that doesn't explode constantly because people of high magic and stuff are just around. And yet so you having, wouldn't be surprised if there were things like this where that's maybe on the table, right? Where some guy can be studious and learn magic to the point where he's like, "Yeah, I've got really powerful spells," but he's dumb enough to try mm-hmm. and use right. them in this context here. High in score, very low wisdom score. Not, yeah, not, exactly. Yeah, yep, so yep, it's just. Yep. As a joke, it's it's funny. It's just a thing to throw mm-hmm. in. It's like, why not? But also, uh, Dorgo being here, probably my favorite of the like world characters, mm-hmm. by, yeah, by I, far. Oh yeah, of all the leaders, he's definitely the one that's got yeah, who's the most not a, like a, he's, not, he's not in the JRPG party, if that makes right, sense. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. he, yep. he he's always, not sworn to Rimuru, but he is a character. Yeah, he always felt like he was kind of not in the same world as this other cast is yes, exactly like like he's actually he's actually from the serious fantasy story R- right right and exactly n- all of them are from you know silly jrpg shenanigans yeah stuff. yeah, <laughs> yeah yep. just the, the dumb mm-hmm. D party so right he's the one who brings up like no no but have you actually thought about what it means to be a leader and a king and like you and know then, leading the masses and, and you then know. you sit here watching this kind of isekai power fantasy show like wait a minute yeah, yeah, I'm actually gonna start writing this down. This Troy is... from Community being like, uh huh, uh huh. Yes, uh-huh. good, good, good stuff there. Okay, yep. but him being here, combination with a more joke silly character in his introduction, means that we could see a, oh, uh, a new kind of push for Rimuru to be like, they're not just here for their own interests. They're kind of here to push you in a specific direction. They're that's... tugging on you. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. and now that you're a demon lord and you're someone who, not just had like economic power like you did before, but like the real shape, you know, world shaping power, world shaping power. Yeah. People are going to be very, very much interested and invested and, uh, making their own desires known. Yeah. And then all this on the back of just having, uh, Veldora be in a human esque form. That is very loud. Yes. Channeling some kind of Kamina type energy. To, uh, mm, to it, it hurts to, to think of it that way, but yes, that's... But that is what it is. No, it's, yeah, no, I know. It's it's that it's whole the, thing. <laughs> right, the, the, yeah, uh-huh. It, I, I almost wonder if he's actually 
there were some elements about him that reminded me of um not Haruhi, but like elements of like the uh like the the young girl Sundare who believes themselves to be like, you know, the best yeah, thing yeah. ever. Oh, like absolutely. that kind of Haruhi yeah, energy. Yeah, ha hands on hips and, you know, like yeah. Standing straight up with a with a giant smile and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Is there any character that you're thinking of that could like th have I mean, that element? Kamina that's probably is one of the better oh, okay. examples. You know, as much as I yeah. hate to say it, but yeah, yeah. But okay, all right. That's where we're at. But y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. We stream every weekday. The info's in the description. Yes, yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next, next time. time.